Hello everyone, it's Yin Tan here, and today we're going to be taking a look at all of the mechanics behind how missiles work in EVE Online, so that you can understand how to use them, and what impacts their ability to apply to ships in the game. Now, missiles are generally considered to be a little more simple to use than turrets, due to the fact that they can't miss as a result of tracking, except if you fire at someone who's outside of your range, as you can see by this comment. But truthfully, understanding how missiles work requires a lot more understanding of the hidden aspects of the game than even turrets do, and we're going to dive as deep into missiles as we did into turrets in our previous video explaining how those worked. Now the first thing that I'm going to cover, and the first thing that you really need to know about missiles, is that in terms of range, the game just straight up lies to you about how far your missiles will actually reach, and this is due to two main factors. Uh, the non-relativity of missiles, and the flight time obfuscation. And in order to explain where these come in, let's look at how the game models and presents the range of your missiles to you when you hover over them in-game or you look at them in Pypha. This value is calculated very simply by just multiplying the velocity of the missile by its overall flight time, which sounds like it should be a good way to estimate the range of missiles, until you remember, as I harp on a lot about in my content, EVE doesn't actually care to model fractions of seconds, and missile flight times often come in times that involve those. Just to give an example of how this works, if you look at this condor, you'll see that its range is listed as 42.2 kilometers, which is its missile flight time of 7.5 seconds, multiplied by the missile velocity of 5,625. But rather than always fly at that 42 kilometers, instead, to simulate these fractional seconds, the engine of EVE Online simply rolls a percentage chance to see if it flies for another second or not at the end of its full second allotment. What this means is that, for this missile in particular, that is going to fly for 7.5 seconds, it actually just has a 50% chance of flying for 7 seconds, and a 50% chance of flying for 8 seconds. What this means practically is that missile ships have a maximum guaranteed protection range that's lower than what Pypha or the game itself will tell you. And in this case that would be 7 times 5,625, which is equal to 39,375, or 39.4 kilometers. To give a more extreme example to demonstrate the impact that this can have, the typical caracal fit that's used by brave newbies will only hit out to a guaranteed 88-ish kilometers with max skills, but can also hit up to 99 kilometers if the RNG gods are in your favor, and this gives missiles a weird form of fall-off that you should be aware of. Alongside that is the fact that missiles do not actually obey the laws of relativity, and instead use Aristotelian physics. And what I mean by that is that if you fire a missile whilst going at 2,000 meters a second, that velocity is not then passed on to those missiles. And what that means for practical purposes is that if you're chasing a target whilst using a missile ship, your missiles will have a relative speed that's their base one minus the speed of the ship that you're trying to hit. To take a look at our caracal example again, what that means is that if you're chasing a ship that's moving at the same speed you will, your average range actually drops to only 78 kilometers, as your missiles lose about 1,892 meters a second of velocity due to the relative speed that the combat is taking place at. If you want to take a look at how that works in practice, and more especially how you can abuse that in a PvP situation, take a look at the video that I've linked in the top right which is a fight between rail shield thoraxes and RLML caracals, which demonstrates how you can use your understanding of this to your advantage. But if you want the TLDR, if you're in a missile ship, you should always try to have your opponents chase you, as opposed to chasing your opponents, as it will give your missiles effectively extra range, whereas chasing after someone will reduce their range. So, that's how you know if your missiles are going to actually reach the target or not. How much damage you're going to do when they get there, on the other hand, is completely different. And unlike turrets, you can't actually look up the stats that affect damage application on the launchers that fire the missiles themselves, as it's all tied into the charges they use. So let's take a look at what you can see there. Now, flight time and maximum velocities are the attributes which determine range, and we've covered those earlier in the video. And resistances and structure hit point values determine how hard it is to kill missiles with non-targeted damage, like bombs or smart bombs, which can stop missiles before they do damage to their intended target. And that's where the concept of firewalling comes from. Which is the use of a dedicated smart bombing ship to destroy missiles before they can actually reach and hit your fleet to do damage to them, which is something that Pandemic Legion has used very effectively versus Cerberus fleets, for example. 
The damage section covers exactly what you'd expect, being the base damage of the missile fired, and the base damage to armour and shields below that is a somewhat useless stat which tells you the modified damage that the missile will deal to a target with base resistances on armour and shield, which is unlikely to ever be the case due to the ubiquity of damage controls, at least in the current fitting meta. After these, the only stats of note are the ones which actually determine how well your missiles are going to apply to the target you're shooting at, and those are explosion velocity and explosion radius. Explosion velocity is the speed above which your damage will start to be reduced versus the target, and explosion radius is the signature radius below which your damage will start to be reduced versus the target. But unfortunately it's not quite as simple as just having two attributes, and there's one attribute that's really important to the equation which is unfortunately not actually available anywhere within the game, and that's the damage reduction factor. And the damage reduction factor determines the impact that those two attributes actually have on the base damage of the missile, and you can only find this within the data that CCP publishes for third party usage, or on wikis such as EVE University, which hold these values on display for you, should you wish to look into it yourself. And yes, before anyone asks in the comments, that is a pretty subtle CCP please. But the shorthand of how damage reduction factor scales is that smaller missiles have lower impact from exceeding their explosion radius or explosion velocity ideals, whereas larger missiles gain a larger penalty from exceeding those same values. And all of these values then just feed into this wonderfully intuitive formula that you can see on your screen. And let's go through it piece by piece. First of all, the damage received is equal to the base damage multiplied by the smallest of the three modifiers that are shown here. And the first potential modifier of these is simply 1, and what that means is once you reach your ideal conditions where your explosion radius and velocity are above and below the stats of the missile being shot, uh, it'll do 1 times the base damage. So unlike turrets, you don't have the chance for wrecking shots and your damage doesn't actually have any random component to it. The second of these is the signature radius of the target divided by the explosion radius of the missile, and this is effectively only in effect as a modifier when the target is sitting completely still, but is still below the ideal target radius of your missiles, and meaning that your damage is reduced by the percentage difference between those two. And the third, final, and of course most complicated one is the one that's actually in effect most of the time when your missiles hit a target and that is the signature radius divided by the explosion radius multiplied by the explosion velocity of the missile divided by the velocity of the target, all raised to the power of the damage reduction factor of the missiles being fired. And what this practically means is that if you actually increase the signature radius of the target you're firing at to beyond the actual explosion radius that you need it to be, then this will still impact the application of your damage, even though you've actually exceeded that base value. And this works in reverse, if you slow a target down below the explosion velocity further beyond that, this will help mitigate you if you've actually, if you're shooting at a target which has a lower signature radius than your explosion radius. To put this into a real scenario, let's take a look at how the Cerberus applies to several different targets, using the notoriously hard to apply with heavy missiles, and how that changes as the target's velocity and signature radius does. As you can see right now, it's shooting at something with an explosion radius of exactly the signature radius of the ship, and with the explosion velocity that is half of the actual target's velocity. As you can see, this reduces the damage that's actually dealt to the target by about a third. Now let's look at what happens when we double the signature radius above what the actual target explosion radius of the missile is. And don't worry too much if these terms are confusing you, because trust me, they're confusing me as I'm trying to explain it. As you can see, it now does the full advertised paper damage, and this is because as the two sides of the equation actually balance out in ratios, what this means is that the end result of the equation is 1, and even if you raise that to the actual damage factor, as you should know from high school maths, 1 raised to the power of anything is still 1. And this means that the lowest modifiers that can be timesed by the base damage are the first and third terms in the equation, whilst the second term is greater than those two and therefore won't be used. 
and that means that even if you then double the signature radius again, you won't actually do any more damage, as the equation still has to pick the lowest term, and that is just going to be the first term, which is 1 meaning you can never do more than your actual assigned paper DPS with missiles. Ultimately, however, if you just want to figure out exactly how much damage your missiles are going to do to any specific target, the best way to do that is through Pyfer or some other fitting tool. Mathing this actually out yourself by hand isn't really beneficial, but what I hope is beneficial is understanding the equations and how they work to actually determine how much damage your missiles will end up doing depending on various factors and how you can influence that. Anyway guys, that's about wraps up the video, but don't click away just yet, because I have something to ask of you. Uh, I want to try and um, answer questions from people who watch my videos in this kind of end section. So if you have something that you'd like to ask me, be it about politics, mechanics, or you know, fitting theory, or anything like that, or even ever seeing, you know, just throw it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick it and uh, I'll answer your question in my next video. Thank you very much, and fly smart.